have for you today an episode without a gimmick is just a thing that I think is really interesting. No actually. gimmick? What, no gimmick. How, how are you how, how no, is it going to be fun without a gimmick? It's not even... That's the crutch. It's not even, I'm going to be honest, not even particularly funny. I just think it's really interesting. Oh God, it's of. not colonialism anymore, is it? No, <laughs> no it's biology, so it's... It's, I love uh, biology ones. In person. I love biology <laughs> ones. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we're, not, we're we're gonna find out that everything's a droop again. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's a biology episode specifically about biological rhythm. Oh. Um, oh. You like what I've done? We can like big fish, <laughs> yeah. little fish, cardboard box, big fish, little fish, cardboard <laughs> box. A um, bit of guitar hero going on. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you for noticing. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I'm talking about uh, any rhythmic biological process. It can be endogenous or exogenous, and uh, or a mixture of the both. What does so that, that mean, Rich? Organisms what do, that experience what do them. either of those mean? You will, you will come to understand what that means okay. um, as I give okay. you some examples. But... Uh, Endogenous meaning it comes from within the organism. Exogenous meaning it's controlled by processes external to the organism. Is this um, unrelated to the erogenous? Unrelated. Although okay. I would say there are both endogenous and exogenous stimuli for the erogenous, erogenous. experiences. So there's a, a field of biology called chronobiology. Um, and... That's like uh, a that's like a goth Doctor Who logo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so chronobiology tends to focus on on processes that have an endogenous component to them. I mean, I don't, can't really think of any way that you wouldn't have at least an endogenous component to them. But like the the rhythmicity, rhythmicalness of it being endogenous. And and to clarify, we will talk about probably the, the classic example, which is uh, the human or non-human, but human is where you get most of the funding, um, sleep-wake cycle. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's the circadian rhythm. Circadian meaning circa DM, approximately a day. Um, oh. oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I had no idea. Oh. It always makes yeah. me think of cicadas. So I really strongly associate, I think yeah, of it yeah. as like the cicada rhythm. <laughs> <When I'm afraid. laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk about cicadas later, but uh, not, da- not on a daily cycle. But the, the sleep-wake cycle, if you put a human uh, under constant conditions. Big um, if. Like, Big if. Yeah. <laughs> but if you put a human in a room with no access to any information about what time of day it is. Constant light, constant temperature, they don't have a clock or anything. Mm. Their biological processes will, including sleepiness and wakefulness, will occur on a roughly 24 hour schedule. Mm. Not exactly 24 hours. Um, It varies from person to person and from species to species as well like if it's, it doesn't just happen in humans um but it'll happen like roughly 24 hours but when you're not under those constant processes it's in, entrained to your environment through largely through light um so when you get light in the back of your retina um your body produces melatonin and that wakes you up. Is it that way around? The uh, biological, like the, the hormone changes that happen in your body uh, over that day night time, which is not just wakefulness and sleepiness, um, are, it's also like your gut activity, but also, for example, in the evening is when you're most, when you feel pain strongest. For that example. makes sense. Let's be- because the nights, when you've got like a cold or a flu or something, the nights are always mm. the worst part. Yeah. Mm. Late afternoon is when you have best grip strength, apparently. Um, ooh, ooh. So like, there's, there's, it's not That's just... incredibly unuseful <laughs> information to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, and it's not just entrained to the light. It's also 
like because because it continues even even under constant conditions it's got to do with your body temperature uh regulates to an extent hormonal changes hormonal changes right it's extremely complex and not just about when the day and the night is um and that's why when you fly somewhere else it's a bitch trying to get used to being on a different day night cycle mm. humans um, weren't meant to fly we weren't, yeah. meant, we weren't meant to travel across the world you still you feel absolutely this... pooped right because you've still got yeah your like original day night cycle kind of like programmed into your body yeah yeah, mm. yeah. your monkey brain ain't designed to handle it <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, specifically uh, as far as it's uh, regulated by the brain it's a part of it's the super charismatic nucleus super uh, charismatic in, in the hypothalamus super charismatic super charismatic isn't that isn't that a Mary, isn't that a Mary song <laughs> we both came up with that joke we're both thinking it <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's uh, genetic material in every single cell like every single cell in your body has has a circadian like process built in but oh. the um it they're kind of regulated by that part of the brain the, uh, the other thing that human bodies are not built to do is shift work um mm. so like people make more mistakes people get more depressed people get like sleep disorders um because they're working late at night when your body really wants to be asleep even if even if you're doing that over a long period of time because it's light in the day and it's dark at night you feel pooped um bloody capitalism in it yeah (laughs) And, uh, it's not colonialism, it's bloody capitalism. It's, bloody, it's the bloody capitalism. And that's why, like, lots of disasters happen at night, because shift workers right. are exhausted. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do sort of, like, yeah. a lot. you hear a lot of, like, stories of, like, like Chernobyl and stuff. Happening. That's what like, I was just thinking. Midnight. Like, literally, like, yeah. there was a shift change at midnight. And then it yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Is that Something also like... why you shouldn't feed uh, gremlins after midnight? <laughs> Exactly. Something like 50% of pilots say that they have, at some point or another, fallen asleep whilst flying a plane. Wow. Ah! <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are lots, lots of... Yeah. So cap, that's, the, oh, wow. that's the section that's on That's a bit capitalism. scary. <laughs> uh, two, two more, like, kind of disorders... Uh, related to this one of them astronauts get really bad health issues for a bunch of reasons but mm. one of them is that it completely messes up their circadian rhythm right um, well because they travel the earth like 20 times a day mm. it, they find like a lot of them find it really really difficult to sleep um it must be so weird to sleep in space because there's no up and down it's like when you yeah. sleep you sleep lying down right but they because there's that that isn't that isn't a thing neither is that that's not a thing either mm. yeah so you just sort of mm. they just sort of go into the pods mm. and the pods and are like upright essentially because yeah, there's no gravity there's no they also lose a huge amount of bone mass and mm. it takes years yeah. for them to get it back that's um, they they do like 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 four hours a day of exercise mass. specifically yeah. to and combat that. muscle mass including heart muscle mass because of the lack right. of gravity so that causes issues um but that's not related to this <laughs> it's just other problems astronauts have um, this is why we need to invent anti-gravity <laughs> but also everybody has their own chronotype um so uh some people well some people don't really have one and, and that causes problems for them um but but some people will naturally fall asleep later some people will naturally wake up earlier um and and that makes like the working schedule being a very set period of time quite difficult for a lot of people and it means like persistent depression for a lot of people and persistent yeah. health issues because na- you, obviously it's made worse by things like having your lights on all the time and looking at a screen late at night and being indoors all the time because your access to the, the kind of lights and the frequency that the spectra of light that regulate your uh that entrain your bodily processes um 
is is limited if you're indoors and you have your screens on and you have your lights on um but but also it, it is kind of naturally different for different people and for teenagers especially they will naturally fall asleep later and wake up later and it has a huge effect on their grades a huge effect on their happiness overall and like that would kind of force them to get out of bed early every single day i remember being a teenager that was yeah i I would frequently fall asleep in class yeah partly because i didn't give a shit and partly because like i would go to bed at three o'clock in the morning every single night because you like you can't stay like you can't go to bed at 10 o'clock when you're 13 years old but humans get a lot of the funding and mice get a lot of the funding because you can cut them up uh, easier than you can cut up humans i was gonna say you can Um, can cut up humans (laughs) yeah i know not necessarily morally right but you can do it it's not necessarily morally right to cut up mice either but they do it Um, but it is (laughs) allowed (laughs) yeah and fruit flies even more so like it's they uh yeah invertebrates have way fewer rights than vertebrates have uh regardless of how smart they are so lobsters just got more some more though legally than you can do mm. oh really just got <laughs> some more yeah <laughs> oh. but yeah even regardless of the fact that that's where most of the funding goes circadian rhythms exist in like most if not all biological uh stuff yeah cells. that's just what um, we've so in yeah humans and so like, biological stuff that probably also includes poop uh, is there a circadian rhythm in poop well in the bacteria in the poop yeah <laughs> ah. so. yeah um well circadian and other biological rhythms but circadian rhythms are like you know a big mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. um talking about plants <laughs> this oh. is a flower clock because uh, Linnaeus invented a clock that uh, works by the different times that flowers open in the morning. Because uh, there's lot, not all flowers, but lots of kinds of flowers will open and close um, every single day. And so uh, he, you know, at a very specific place and a very specific time of year, uh, measured oh, right. what times they open <laughs> in the morning and um, invented a clock that would like progressively bloom like every half hour or something uh, as the day goes on. So it's like, like, wow. like how sunrise wow. don't really work. Yeah, that's yeah, so it cool. I love really that. Work. There was there was somebody who wrote a letter concerned that this would put clockmakers out of business, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But it wouldn't really work because it has to be a specific time of year, a specific place, different al- yeah. altitude affects it. Like there's it's a, a bunch conceptual of different clock. things that affect it. But yeah, but because the major one in in these kinds of plants, at least, is light. Um, like for some plant processes and some of the same plant processes in like different plants, temperature makes a difference as well. But for these ones, it's mm-hmm. light. Um, like he could, you know in his specific time of place and specific time of year have a fairly predictable like clock but it just it's not practical it was not going to put any anybody out of business <laughs> i um, love that so much so though try that's and, so but, cool. try, <laughs> yeah. try and put people out of business <laughs> um but there's also there's also a thing like flowering is also affected by uh photoperiodism which is a circannual rather than circadian process Mm -hmm. meaning that at different times of year the length of the day is shorter or actually Mm -hmm. um it was initially thought when this was like discovered in the 1920s that it was the time of day that makes a difference it's actually not it's the time it's the length of night that makes a difference um Uh. so uh plants will produce flowers um like not just open them but produce them uh depending on how the length of night that they have had some of them will only produce flowers if they've consistently had a few short nights some of them will only produce flowers if they've had a long night some of them will only produce flowers if they've had some short nights and then some long nights and even a few minutes of light exposure in the middle of the night makes a difference actually to the to whether or not it will produce a flower at all. Wow. <laughs> um, if you expose some plants to just a few minutes of light in the middle of the night, they just won't flower. So things like um, light pollution could have yeah. a big impact on like 
Yeah, exactly. Flowering plants. Wow. Yeah. Huh. That um, makes sense because, like, so I, I always confused me how, like, trees and stuff knew how to, like, let go of their leaves. Mm. I assumed it was, I, I assumed it was, like, the temperature but obviously the temperature yeah. isn't consistent throughout the year yeah like or like throughout the years rather but like sunset sunrise yeah. is more consistent that's not exactly affected by things like it's, it's it's extremely consistent um the kind of light also makes a difference whether it's blue light or orange light makes a make, is, is important and there's different different hormones um that that or that pick up on each of those photo Periodism uh, also exists in animals. Um, so, f- for example, canaries will l- the like repertoire and complexity of their singing changes throughout the year based mm. on uh, based on light levels, and that is because one of the like mechanisms for that is like the the size of the the like song center of the brain changes like grows and recedes at different wow. times of year so oh it's not brain just, literally changes it's not just behavioral i mean so it's not just uh, them like it's, it's always different when you're talking i want to about... find a mate we want to exactly. have little babies i'm gonna i'm gonna be singing yeah. my little heart heart out this is the time to do it it's literally the length of the days is changing their brain yeah that's it's so it's very cool. difficult to talk about without reducing behavior to biology and biology to behavior. Yeah. I'm discovering like every sentence I kind of need to add a whole bunch of qualifiers to. But yeah, basically their their behavior in that way is like regulated by a, a biological process that is regulated by a physical process in a very predictable kind of a way, which is wow. interesting and and ry- yeah. and rhythmic way. So this this is a little rapid fire of some more biological rhythms because they're not just circadian and circannual. Like there's a bunch of, of different interesting ways in which rhythmic process biological processes interact with uh, stuff. <laughs> stuff. For example, uh, the feeding habits of one animal are going to be dependent on the biological process, like exogenous to one animal, endogenous to another. For example, humans like bed bugs feed at night because that's when humans are in bed producing warmth and carbon dioxide, right? So horrible, right. horrible little bugs. And that, that, that that that's They're an the exogenous signal to the bugs. bed bug. It's an endogenous process to the human, right? Um, I hate bed bugs. I hate them with a vengeance. <laughs> yes, they are the worst things in existence. I have. They're had so them. bad. And I did. Like we did, like it, we were extremely paranoid. A few months after we had them, we were convinced yeah, exactly. we had them again. We yeah. called all the people Every... back. All the people said you don't have them, but we made this spray the place anyway. Absolute so much work and just so paranoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and like, yeah, even when when you no longer have them, you literally you spend the next six months every yeah. single scratch and every yeah, little yeah, sort of nick yeah. and every like, single. Are they, sort of is it three tiny in a row? Irritation. Is it three in a row? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> It's horrible. Yeah. Utterly horrible. It's the worst experience of my life. Yeah. It, yeah, really. For real. Um, <laughs> uh, cic- <laughs> cicadas uh, come out every... Like, periodical cicadas, not all cicadas. Periodical cicadas come out every 13 or 17 years. And that's, that's so mad! That's the combination between, like... That's, that's the combination that? between the time it takes them to grow. And, well, uh, to... to to fill up the predators. Is right, the, so they can do it all at once, maximum chance of that. survival. Like oak yeah. trees with acorns, like they, you just want maximum yes. drop. You want, like, yeah, if you yeah. can overwhelm the predators, then yeah. maximum number will be able to as, survive. Yeah, as opposed to the predators getting used to it and just like increasing their numbers. Right. Um, Right. Um, okay, that makes yeah, that makes perfect sense. Like yeah, so they yeah. they just like hold off, and then it's all mm. at once. There's no chance that predators could have like been keeping up in line with the amount of prey available, kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Oh. Exactly. I never um, understood why they did that. That's uh, so cool. 
But that's that's a combination between the time it takes them to grow and a circannual process of like temperature change. Um, they come out a very they mature at a very specific time of year and they live for a very short time after they've matured and lay their eggs and things. Um, so so it's it's like in like endogenous and you know and yeah exogenous and stuff. Um, but also also speaking of the tides. Uh, like sea birds uh, in varying ways have both circadian rhythms but also they they their behavior is uh, regulated by tide tide some tidal changes because they feed when the tides are in um, mm -hmm. and they go like swoop down on stuff that's left behind yeah it's way more complex than that there's also lunar rhythms semi lunar rhythms and like but like and and the impacts that those have on biological rhythms and the impact that those biological rhythms have on other biological rhythms the universe man yeah. <laughs> it's complicated it's a bloody complex it's a bit complex isn't it <laughs> yeah and super interesting and i'd love to know way more yeah finally i want to talk a little bit about what even is a day and what even is a month and what even is a year what because even they is weren't a day? always the length what well they weren't day, always yeah. the length that they are now um, mm. when the moon and the earth smashed together about four and a half billion years ago the length of a day was uh, six hours wow. within a hundred million years of that it was ten hours the length of the day keeps increasing but at a decreasing rate and that's because the moon the cycle of the moon is getting further and further away so the the moon regulates the length of the day, and it and it is cycling further and further away from. The so earth. yeah, eventually the moon so will it, disappear. It continues like... to slow down the spin of the Earth, but slower and slower. Based on observation from of coral rings, um, a day was twenty two hours four hundred million years ago. At the time that uh, mm. the dinosaurs went extinct they think it was 22 hours and 45 minutes wow. and it will be 25 hours within 225 million years um, oh it's not long then yeah by the, by the time we get our pension <laughs> 25 I hours thinking, days, eh? i was thinking like how does this affect the calendar because obviously the, the, the number of days in the year will change as well if the, and mm. like how does this affect like how long a second is and how long a minute is and stuff gonna, like that. that and then i was that's, thinking, that's not our problem we're, not gonna, we're literally not going to survive for that to be an issue so like like i don't i don't think humans are going to survive for that to be an issue well like, pessimistic they're going to have to adjust that much they think they think that circadian rhythm like a biological clock first existed in prokaryotic cells so cells without even like a proper nucleus wow. and they and they were probably given like probably given to eukaryotic cells um through like it's super inter it's super interesting how bacteria and things can and viruses and stuff can share share yeah. dna mm -hmm. information but i won't go into it too much but they think that happened anyway um and also that it probably evolved somewhat independently in eukaryotic cells and and in like but but that yeah so, but anyway, when these first processes first started, a day was something t way different. Um, mm. See it in the record of, in the fossil record, like this is what coral was doing <laughs> hundreds of millions of years ago. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. Mm. I'll put some, I'll put some interesting um, articles, like papers that have been published in the description if anybody wants just like a random selection of interesting stuff. Oh, 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 okay. I do have to tell you all, this is relevant. Uh, it's not that relevant. I repurposed the, is it a nut or not a nut? Oh shit. I repurposed the, is it a nut or not a nut quiz for a Christmas family quiz on Christmas day. And it went down very well. Well, <laughs> And presumably all of your family watched the show and so knew all of the answers. It was my partner's family. They hadn't seen it. 